Thanks for staying with, with us. So over the weekend, back to this Yahya Bello matter, the governor, Yahya Bello of Kogi State, declared his presidential ambition, which generated so much talking points, outrage, and mixed reactions amongst many Nigerians, especially on social media platforms. In fact, the fact that, that the way he mentioned um, his plan to replicate his governorship performance in Kogi, if he becomes the next president, people are saying, ah, Uncle, what did you do in Kogi exactly? Because some of us don't even know. They're only hearing it for the first time that he actually did something in Kogi. So join us to help us understand what this man, Governor Yahya Bella, has done in Kogi State is um, Honorable Moses Okeze Okafo. He's the Director of Research and Strategy, Yahya Bello Presidential Campaign Organization. Good morning, sir. Are you there? Yeah, good morning, Moriah. How okay, the, are you? The volume is a bit low. I'd like it to be increased. If I can, that would be nice so we can hear you properly. So, your... Yes, can you hear me now? Now I can hear you. Thank you very much. So, Governor Yahya Bello declared on, over the weekend, and we're thinking to ourselves, okay, give us some numbers in Kogi. What have you done? What has your president, what has the governor done that um, you, you believe that Nigerians would expect him to replicate in, um, if, he, if he becomes president? Thank you for that slip of tongue. What has my president done? Ah. Um, <laughs> let us first of all start by saying that um, uh, the Ayabelo campaign for president in 2023 is not a spin-off of uh, Hope 23 or the MK, uh, MKO Abiola persona. It is not. Okay. He inspires us, and we're so happy to have his daughter have sat with us as the DG and also his own DG, Senator Jonathan Zwingina with us as the chairman of the campaign council. But the fact remains that this is all Yahya Bello who he stands for, uh, his achievements, and of course, uh, his aspirations to lead this country after he has led Kogi State. Yes, uh, during the declaration, he, uh, he's, he did two things. He said two things. One, he's running a first on the plank of um, admitting that the current administration of His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari has done a lot in terms of infrastructure and so many other things, and that his successor should be somebody who is out to consolidate and not to discredit. So, right. of course, he admits that the current APC administration has done a lot, but there are also gaps that must be filled, for instance, in security, in diversity management, in the economy, and in other one or two other areas. And so he sees that he is well equipped to fill those gaps, to bridge those gaps, and that is why the slogan of the campaign is hope, bridging the gap. And then secondly, the second plank of his uh, campaign, which has challenged everybody, is that he is not running apologetically, but on a solid record of verifiable achievements in his current assignment as the governor of Kogi State since 27 January 2016 till date. And what are those achievements? I think, uh, first of all, um, I probably don't know if you know it, but uh, uh, Kogi State is leading the country in the reduction of under five mortality since 2018. That is from statistics from the Federal Ministry of Health, the National Population uh, uh, Commission, and of course, uh, USAID st uh, sponsored that study. I don't think uh, that this is something Nigerians don't want. They want that. That is one of his achievements. Okay. Uh, Let me pause you for a second. Bello, Honorable, we'll come back to the yes. other key things he has done. Let me throw a few more questions in for you. Go ahead, Waiki. I mean, I've been reading a lot of tweets and um, tubes on doing this. We've been talking about um, the governor for a while. And a lot of people are saying he doesn't pay salaries, that he's owing a lot of salaries. Is, if this is true, how is he going to... Is that what he wants can to I, replicate? Can I, can I answer that immediately? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Governor Yaya Bello has not owed salary since 2018, after he concluded the staff screening and verification exercise. He has not owed salaries. He pays 100% salaries to state workers at the state level since 2018. He has not owed salaries. He pays promptly on or before the end 
of every month. Okay. At the local government level, at the local government level, there is what we call the percentage salaries. Those also come promptly on or before the end of the month, but they are in percentages and for reasons that are well known to not just Kogi State, but all Nigerians and many states. The workforce he inherited is over bloated. He met about 80,000 workers, in quote, workers, in quote, on the state payroll. He, con he conducted that screening exercise for almost one and a half years just to bring it down to manageable levels. And okay. realized at the end of it all, right. can you hear me? Yes, very clearly. He realized at the end of it all that out of that 80,000 workers, only about 10,000 were ghost workers. Okay. The rest were real genuine co-guides on the state payroll, okay. except that for many of them at the local government level, there were no offices or job description. People just stuffed the payroll with their, their friends, with their families, with anybody they wanted to help, just not out of their own pocket. That was the legacy of the 15 years of PDP governance in the state. Okay, all right. And so Let you me... still had a bloat. Right. Let me... I, get, I think we yes, get the point. I think I'd, I'd like to address this for you very well. Mm. As we're talking now, His Excellency pay salaries on or before the end of every month. Okay. Except that at the local government level, it is in percentages. When the um, allocations come from the Federation, the state share of IGR accruing to every local government is added to it. The unions, NULGE, NUT, NLC, TUC, at each local government level sit mm. down with the state officials. Okay. This is what has come in. Okay. It cannot pay everybody 100%. Right. How much should we pay? And they agree on the percentages per month. His Excellency did direct that it shouldn't fall below 50%, no matter what happens. There is a simple solution to all of this. Kogi State has no reason having 30 to 40,000 workers on her local government payroll alone. Other states have retrained between 20 to 25,000 or more workers. Mm -hmm. His Excellency could also re retrench today. And after the screening exercise in 2018, the issue of retrenchment came up. Labor agreed. Labor implored His Excellency not to retrench. They would rather have the uh, percentage salaries than have people retrenched. And His Excellency has also said that retrenchment is not something you do to anybody in the current economy. And so, mm. when you have a local government workforce okay. that you will require about five billion to pay every month if you want to pay 100%. But at the end of every month, everything that comes in, including allocation from the Federation and, of course, the state IGR and other income, accruing to the local government is not up to or slightly above three billion. And you still have to take care of recurrence, traditional rulers, uh, projects, and the rest. You can understand why the issue of uh, percentage payment persists at local government levels. There okay, is no point Nigeria taken. Let me, let me pause you for a second. Let me, I, I, we get the point. Let me pause because I have a few okay. more questions in for you. Go ahead, Mariam. Okay, um, we know that if you're going to say one problem that's besieged our nation for the past... Please, you, you need know. to speak up. Um, it's a bit, it's very faint here. Okay. Okay, so there's one problem that we're dealing with as a nation right now, and it's insecurity. And I've heard your governor talk about um, um, how he's handled it in Kogi State, but I also know that he's part of the governor's forum, and I wonder in what ways he has, he has supported... Nigeria as a whole and other states in their fight against insecurity, especially Kaduna State right now? When, uh, when Governor Yayabelo came to office in 2016, Kogi State was the most insecure state in Nigeria outside of the Northeast that was being ravaged by Boko Haram. In less than six months after he took office, it just stopped abruptly. And it was simple. He spent his security vote on security, and in addition to other homegrown uh, strategies, including the use of community policing, the use of 
uh, synergy. He synergized the various security agencies that were posted to the state. He made sure that rather than work at cross purposes that, that like they've been doing before he came on board, he knit them together. He bought over 250 vehicles and spent billions on other forms of logistics for them and equipped them thoroughly. And he had them working together in a joint task force. And there were other things that were done I may not be able to say on air, but I can assure you that one year after Governor Yaya Bello came to office, we celebrated a six week period without a single incident of kidnapping. And since then, kidnapping, armed robbery, and other forms of banditry are now opportunistic crime, just very rarely heard of in Kogi State. Governor Yaya Bello says the next president of Nigeria should be somebody who has the capacity to ensure security of lives and properties in a large territory with difficult terrain. He has proven it. And so when he says, he wants to replicate what is done in Kogi mm. State in Nigeria if given the chance. Mm. Of course, he's not speaking wishfully. Right. He's saying things that he has accomplished. Okay. Kogi State today has been rated as far back as 2018 as the safest, uh, most peaceful state in the country and the second, uh, the, the second lowest crime rate in the country. It is still the same Kogi with 10 borders, sharing 10 borders, the largest number okay. of any state right. in this country. It has not changed. What changed is the chief executive officer and the chief security okay. officer of Kogi State, and we have peace and security today in Kogi right. State. Right, it is so what, one of the to. things he wishes Nigerians allows him to replicate in the country. Okay, so I'm not sure which indices was used for this rating or which organization or body did this rating, but we'll come to that. The Let me throw in a few more the, questions. The National Peace Index, National Peace Index, National and Peace also Index. Uh, uh, statistics from the National Bureau for Statistics okay. as far back as 2018. All right. right Google okay. is your friend. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, um, because we don't have enough time, we need to answer the questions um, fast and throw in more questions. The, one of the biggest challenges Nigeria is facing is revenue. We don't have, Nigeria as a country needs to increase its revenue. Um, we need to make more money, we need to open up more opportunities. Now, the governor within his state, obviously, as from what you even just said now, struggled with revenue and how to pay and meet the internal obligations of one state. How do we now trust that it will be able to manage the humongous challenge of our debts, of the economic crisis we're facing, petrol, all of that, and generate income for us as a country if he becomes the president? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Kogi State, when he, uh, His Excellency Ayabelo took over, the monthly IGR was about 300 to 350 million per month on the average. Mm. Less than one year after he took over, it crossed the 1 billion naira mark. And so, of course, he showed capacity in growing the IGR and the, the income of the state. Apart from that, he has, uh, he has made very great use of reduction of wastage and the plugging of loopholes. You would understand that Kogi State, uh, at least as at last year again, for, the, for several times running, is, is rated by the Debt Management Office as the state that has reduced domestic debt the most in Nigeria. So he's a, he's a trendsetter, a trailblazer in the area of managing the economy, managing what you have. If he's given Nigeria to manage, Nigeria is rich. Nigeria has a lot of money at her disposal. It's not just being put to work for the people. Okay. The loopholes that we're all complaining about today, if we want them to end, let us give Governor Yaya Bello a trial because in Kogi State, as proven by all the various rating agents, I just talked to you about the debt management office. Yeah. You may not be aware that Kogi State scored 100% in the state's financial transparency, accountability, and sustainability index of the World Bank. You may also not know that the World Bank wrote a letter commending Governor Yaya Bello for returning money after the project has ended and there is a surplus. He returned $4 million back to the World Bank, right. which was used by another state. And in fact, that state 
couldn't have gotten that money if Kogi did not return it. All right, let and me let me throw in one more to question. Show you the transparency, right? And right. so the question of the Nigerian economy is something that His Excellency is ready okay. and in fact raring to go. Okay, so there's a question that many southwestern Nigerians are really interested in, and this question is. Whose idea was it to hire Hafsa Tabiola? Because you are the director of research and strategy. Was it your strategy? Was it um, Femi Panikayode's idea? What exactly was your objective of hiring the daughter of one of the symbols of democracy in this country to be your campaign director? Good. Uh, like I told you, the Ayabiolo campaign is not a spin-off of, uh, of the MKO Abiola campaign. He inspires us just the way Martin Luther King Jr. inspires the whole world. Many uh, politicians have made use of his name, his quotes, what he stands for, his ideals. And nobody has come to lambast them that there is, a, that there is perhaps some form of copyright or, 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 or intellectual property on it. The Ayabelo campaign organization is reflective of the man himself. He is well known for inclusivity. He's somebody who has managed diversity massively in Kogi State. Kogi State is a microcosm of Nigeria. It has about 10 or more indigenous tribes, and they used to be heavily divided before he came in. Mm. He knits them together today. You don't hear of that anymore. Giyayabelo is the governor who has put more women into high-ranking government positions than any other leader in this country before him. Yaya Bele is the governor who has brought in people from all over the state. There are at least 54 okay. Nigerians from other states and regions who okay. are working in As Kogi I said, I have, very more, I have very little time. So let me throw in one yeah. final question. You've answered yeah. my question. Let me come to the and yes, I come to my um, he, uh, The governor is having problems with the NME. They say the, his um, percentage of salaries is inhuman and unacceptable. In fact, from this article I'm reading, there are many... Um, problems with the Nigerian Medical Association. Okay, let me address that. There are, there are no issues there. Since 2018, the Nigerian Medical Association and her members have gotten their full salaries as and as when due. In February last month, February, okay, that was February of this year, there was an abysmal drop in the federal allocation, in the income of the federation. And when the money that came to the state fell so low, what did the governor do? He directed that anybody on levels one to six or who is earning 40,000 naira and below should be paid their salary 100%. Every other person should take a hit, 30% or less. Just for February of last of this year, February of this year, the NMA <laughs> came out then to say, we do not agree that our money should be deducted. But of course, the government has also said that once uh, more money comes in, we are going to make up the shortfall. This is just to gather the peculiar uh, situation in February of 2022. But you will know that NMA Kogi State is one of the branches that opts out when other branches go on strike for non payment of salaries or okay. anything. Why? Okay. Because Governor Yaya answered our question. Heavily, no. has been paying them as and at when due. Okay. Yeah. So there are other controversies um, surrounding um, Kogi State and the governor. Um, the telecom Hit operators... Hit me with them. I'm, I have your answers here. Go ahead, Okay, Mike. so the telecom operators recently talked about the possible shutdown of many of the sites in Kogi State and how it will bring about a shutdown of telecommunications in many other surrounding states. Could you address why this is happening right now. And then we remember Kogi State was in the news with the EFCC concerning amounts of money that were supposed to be paid as salaries but, were, but was invested in the bank. Could you also clear that for us, please? And, uh, uh, I have one more. Okay. okay, I think for the, the issue with the telecoms operator, it's mainly uh, Globacom. The fact remains that these are lawful taxes which they pay other places. They've just been getting away with it in Kogi State for far too long. Mm. And the state government insisted that it is time you pay. Of course, the, before it got to this level, the matter went to court. And the courts 
I came down very hard on the telecoms of operators that you make this money in Kogi, you will pay these taxes. It ordered them to pay. It is a flouting of the court orders that the state government threatened to shut down their various uh, uh, stations if they don't pay. So it's not as if the government is acting arbitrarily. They are acting okay. by the power and the orders of a court. Okay. Having said that, let me go to the... The, yes, the second plank. Uh, could you come again with the second plank? No, question? unfortunately, we have to go, sir. Thank you so much. We have Please to wrap come up. Back. We, we have really of time. questions for you. We'll be speaking with you. Honorable Moses Okezio Kafo, Director of Research and Strategy, yes, Yahya Bill, has Presidential since run away from Campaign Organization. Thank you so much, sir. But I must, I must say my observation. Yeah. So he has, um, uh, yeah, Fafsat has his DG, and he has. Honorable Moses Okezi Okafor as his um, uh, research. So he has a very good I, mix of, of people I in his to team. I ask him how he, he's growing the um, Kogi economy because he's even still waiting for the uh, allocation. 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 Yeah. allocation. I, I would salaries. have thought if he's growth that growing he the allocation yeah, that's what the, the question. economy, <laughs> yeah. he doesn't need government allocation. We have to run. That's all we can take on the show today. The campaign is just starting. Trust, we're going to bring in more, bring in more people. We're talking. Let us hear what they want to do. We are going to we are, we are ready for them this year. 2023 is not going to come like that. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.